Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach, the podcast that is for instructional technology coaches. If you're in a role of professional development, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to episode number 62. I hope you guys are having a great beginning to the school year. We are about a month in in my school district. Things are still just getting underway. Now, last week we had a chance to talk about relationships and the relationships that we deal with when it comes to tech coaches and administrators. I hope you had a chance to check out episode number 61. We certainly had a lot of great buzz around it, and I want to say thank you for everybody who took the time to check it out. Today we're going to be taking a deeper dive into all of that and not just talking about the relationships we have with our administrators, but the relationships that we have with our teachers. You see, if it wasn't for our teachers, we wouldn't have our tech coach positions. It really can be said that our relationships are both professional and also, you know, peer to peer. It's a different relationship, right? When it comes to our teachers, these are the people that are in our union. These are our people that go to bat with us. These are the people that are in the classrooms with us. And not only that, but these are the teachers that we have to have great conversations with both in and out of the work environment in order to get our jobs done. So today we're going to be talking about relationships with our teachers from a variety of sources. And I not only have some great tips and tricks for you for myself and my experiences, but I also went out to Facebook this weekend and I got four tech coaches to give us their advice. And we're going to be going into the different things that they have said. And you might be surprised at some of the things that other tech coaches are certainly saying. We, of course, hope that you guys are subscribing to this show and checking out all the great stuff that's happening. You can find us over on askthetechcoach.com, where not only do we have great blog posts, but we have some amazing free templates for you guys that you can bring into your classrooms and use tomorrow with your teacher. So check everything out over on askthetechcoach.com. We've got our blogs. And also, we've got 60-plus amazing instructional technology coaching podcasts. We hope you check it out, and we hope that you subscribe to this show and all of our shows over on the Teacher Cast Educational Network. All right, it is that time of the show where we bring in our Tech Coach Tip of the Week. Don't forget our Tech Coach Tip of the Week is brought to you by the Educational Podcast Directory. If you're a tech coach out there looking for a great podcast to listen to on your way to work, check out the Educational Podcast Directory featuring more than 130 teachers, administrators, and other educational professionals creating podcasts by educators for educators. And if you're looking at your pod app of the of the day, looking at it going, Where do I find great podcasts? Well, look no further than the Educational Podcast Directory over at educationalpodcastdirectory.com. Today's tip of the week is very simple. You see, last week we discussed the importance of creating a professional relationship with your building administrator. This week, we're going to be taking a look at those relationships that you have with your staff members. These are the people that work with you every day in and out of your classrooms. They're dedicated, passionate, and often members of your professional association. So it's important from long-lasting to form long-lasting relationships with your teachers as early as possible, not just as a tech coach, but really as colleagues. The trust that we have with our teachers goes a long way in creating there are long lasting and successful tech coaching programs. And I have to say, all of that comes from personal experience. This is my fifth year as a tech coach, but my first year in a new building, in a new district, in a new everything, brand new everything for me. And I am just now after three or four weeks of being in the classroom, really starting to sink my teeth into being a tech coach for a brand new crop of teachers. And I'm having a good time learning what they need, what they know, and most importantly, what they're looking to have in their classroom. So let's talk about relationships, right? We want to know what kind of relationships we're building because relationships are easy to build, but they also have some difficulties, right? Like as a tech coach, you're always in that middle, right? You're not a full-time teacher, maybe, but you're also not an administrator, maybe, right? Now, look, we know that there are some tech coaches that have administrative responsibilities. And even like myself this year, there are tech coaches that are also in the classroom. So, you know, there's a gray area here that we're talking about, but we do ride that fence, right? We're not in the, we're not 
a full-time teacher. We're not a full-time administrator. But there are times where you have to walk into a classroom and, and help a teacher do something that maybe they're uncomfortable doing. So it's always difficult to come up and try to play that fine line between where are you today? Are you in teacher mode? Are you in colleague mode? Are you in friend mode? Are you in semi-administrator mode? What is that relationship that you're working on at that given moment, right? And it's hard because usually you're either trying to build those personal relationships or you're attempting to come up with a way to entice teachers to try new things. And we know that that is not the easiest thing to do for many teachers. But it's not always difficult. There are some positives about building these relationships. First of all, because you're not an administrator, you do have an amazing opportunity to get to know your teachers on a much deeper level. I know even for myself over the last couple of weeks, I've had a great opportunity to get to know my teachers as, as, as people, as humans, not just as, you know, educators in a classroom, the way that I felt over the last couple of years. And, you know, in my previous position, I was a tech coach in in six buildings, K to 12. I really didn't have a chance to get to know people because as soon as I was finished having conversations, I had to move to the next room, the next grade, heck, even the next campus. So getting to know your teachers is an amazing thing to build those positive relationships. I also find that the more the teachers can trust you and know you on a personal level, it's going to make it easier for them to come to you for help and support. After all, the whole idea behind coaching is to have teachers or anybody you're working with feel vulnerable enough to come to you and say, I need help with something. So we talked a little bit about the difficulties and we talked a little bit about the positives, but it's not just about what we have to say here. It's about what other tech coaches. So we reached out onto Facebook this weekend and I, I reached out on the Future Ready Instructional Coaches Facebook group. And if you're not a member of this, you got to check it out. Do a search for it. Instruction, Future Ready Instructional Technology Coaches. Uh, Sarah Thomas does a great job at this. Tom Murray does a great job at keeping everything together. Check that out. We will certainly put a link to that in our show notes over here at Ask the Tech Coach episode number 62. Amy Storer, and if I'm getting names wrong or or, or mispronounced, I apologize, but she's at Tech Amy SC. Her advice is bring your teachers to the table. Make them a part of the conversation. So much of what we advocate for our students also applies too. Amy, I got to say, this is great advice. Bringing your teachers to that table. If our teachers want to learn something, let's face it they're going to want to learn something. When we're creating professional development, always include your teachers. Don't just do top-down PD because the district says so, the principal says so, the standards say so. Always bring your teachers to the table and bring them into that conversation. Now, that doesn't have to be a formal thing, right? I remember going into different classrooms and just asking the question, what do you want to learn? What are you working on? What are some of the things you're struggling with? Those are great ways to bring teachers into the conversation without taking time, without needing substitutes, without having a formal sit-down meeting, right? You can get a lot more done sometimes just by having great conversations and then throwing in a few different questions here or there to kind of take a, a, a temperature of the audience. Another tech coach, Tina Model, says, be approachable, be available, and be friendly. It'll be easy for teachers not to feel pressured to learn new things. And again, Tina, spot on with this. So many times teachers see a tech coach and they get nervous, right? Because we are the people that are coming in to help to, and and I don't want to say change and manipulate, but really in order to be vulnerable, that teacher needs to know that you're here and you're there by their side, helping them out. So being approachable and available, but most importantly, being friendly is certainly something. Now, another tech coach, Dan Krinus says, listen, do so by asking more and talking less. Now, we mentioned this last week in our episode with our administrators, right? Always ask the questions, let them answer. And Dan goes on and says, letting teachers drive the coaching cycle rather than coaches always bringing their own thoughts and ideas, right? So it's easy for us to go into our classrooms and push, pull, manipulate, uh, you know, run around and say, let me do this. But really what Dan is trying to say here is help them out by doing less. Show them, don't help them out as much as I need to. 
I love that advice. I know Dan's a great coach. He's got a great school district up there that he's working with. And he also comes on and says, for the tech coaches, do sorry, don't do too much for teachers. They must be able to do things for themselves. And I got to tell you, that's something that I'm fo- struggling on now. Um, you know, where I am, there is a lot to get done. And I'm, I'm excited about all that stuff. And I find right now, just because I'm excited... I'm the first one to jump in and do things for teachers and even do things for my students because I want to show off. I want to show them why I'm here and why they brought me in. And and it's important to know that we we don't we don't want to do that. Right. So we want to make sure that we are always helping them learn rather than doing it for us. Now, our last tech coach uh, popped in, and her name is Avra, Rachel, and she says, I guess the way that she looks at it, or I guess the way I look at it, and this is her voice, is just as we expect our teachers to differentiate their teaching strategies to meet the needs of and the immense learner variability we see in our classrooms, we as tech coaches need to do the same for them. One more time. Avra, totally agree. We need to differentiate our strategies. What works in third grade certainly doesn't work in seventh grade and certainly might not work in 10th through 12th grade. Always know what your teachers are working with. Always know the the grade level that they're working with and try to your best to differentiate the different skills, skill sets, examples. I'll tell you, with our mastermind, we recently had our first meeting. It was fantastic. We had 15 tech coaches show up. It was great. And we gave out templates. And we were very, very keen when we were talking about the different templates that we were given out, that some of these work well with older kids, some of these work well with younger kids, but it doesn't take too long to take that simple lesson and manipulate it for the various grades. And I got to tell you, they the, it was... It, you know, really when you're working with your teachers, I guess, know what you're doing and know what grade you're working with. And I think everything will work out too. So I want to say thank you to Amy, Tina, Dan, and Av- and Avra, Avra um, for joining in over on our Facebook group. And again, I will put the link to the Future Ready Instructional Coaches uh, Facebook group in our links here. This is Ask the Tech Coach show number 62. So let's wrap up here a little bit talking today about relationships. Here's a couple things that I've learned and some advice that I have for you guys. Number one, we've kind of mentioned this, but be friendly, right? Open up, let them into your world. Um, In a situation right now where I'm trying to get to know my teachers, they're trying to get to know me, and you know what? I'm talking about my life. I'm talking about my family, talking about the kids, talking about different things that I love to do. You know, we need to get to know each other one-to-one before I can sit there and go, hey, here's a Google Doc, this is how you do it. Hey, you're doing this right, you're doing this wrong, try something different, right? Always make sure that you are friendly and you are a human before you're a tech coach. Teachers want to get to know you so they can trust you. Second piece of advice that I have, crawl. Never run. Crawl first. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had a, tech, uh, I had a teacher come up and ask me a question, and it was a simple question. And I immediately went 90 miles an hour, and I went way over their head, and I gave way too much information, and I could just see the glassy eyes coming out. Big mistake, right? I I immediately realized what I was doing. I backed off and just said, look, I will come out. I will help you. Give me five minutes of your time. We will fix this. And I did, and it all worked out. So if they ask you the tough questions, just answer the tech, if asking the tech questions, I should say, just answer the tech questions. Don't try to overdo yourself. You don't want to give them a long-winded answer that might scare them off for other questions down the road. Also, obviously as a tech coach, we are digital natives. Doing technology comes natural to us. We love this stuff. We're usually the first adopters. Remember that your teachers... They might not be, right? They might not be keen to do these things, or they might be keen to doing these things, but they don't quite have your philosophies in mind. They might not know why things happen. They might get frustrated for other reasons. So remember that even though they're not digital natives, it might take them just a little bit of time to understand what you're talking about. So again, this goes back to changing the strategies that we talked about a little bit earlier and differentiating your approaches. Try to get an idea for what your teachers are asking and where they're coming from with these questions. Sometimes you answer their questions and sometimes you answer around their questions to help them out. Next piece of advice I want to give you guys is don't show 
off, right? And again, this is kind of going back to that story I just gave you. I, I, I was asked a question about something and I totally overdid it. I went into show off mode. Don't do that. Learn from my mistakes on this one. Like just be, be yourself, be helpful, be friendly and give them exactly what they need. And when you're finished, always end your conversations positive and remind them that no matter what, you're there to help them. And even if they go back to their room and they still have some questions, here's my number, here's my email, here's the room I'm in, I will come out to you, I will help you out. Now, if you do all those different things, you will definitely be gaining the trust and friendship of your staff. After all, these are the people that you go to war with every day. These are the people that are in your union. These are the people that are sitting there around the lunch table saying nice things about you. So making sure that you have a great relationship with your staff, with your teachers, is extremely important. Now, what do you do after this, right? You, you've done all your work. You, you've gotten to know your teachers. What's the last thing, right? How do we wrap up this episode here and put a nice bow in it? First of all, I want to go back to a few things that we had mentioned last week in the episode about being uh, nice with your principal and sharing your ideas and, and really making those relationships happen. Just like we said to our principals, what do you want to see in your school? Once you break that wall with your teachers, then you go in and you ask the questions. What do you want to be doing in your classrooms that you can't do now? What are those pain points? What are the things that you find that you'd love to do that you can't? Or I'll give you another great question. What are your students asking to do that you're maybe just a little uncomfortable with, right? How can I help you become more comfortable using the technology that your students are already masters at learning? And when we talked about our relationship with our principals, I had mentioned keep things data driven, bring your spreadsheets, bring your graphs, bring your charts. When we're talking to our teachers, don't do any of that. Talk from experience, right? Share your experience. For the last four years, when I was running around six buildings and, and the teachers really didn't get a chance to know me, they even in the fourth year, they kept asking, were you a teacher? And I kept having to say to them, I am a teacher. I have been a teacher. I've been a teacher for 18 years. I've done these things. So always share from experience, not data. Share with them what you are doing in the classroom, what you would have done in the classroom. Give them real world experiences to get them to know that you are just like them. You're doing the same job that they are. You just might be doing it in different classrooms where they're doing it with a single classroom, but we're all educators doing it together. Listen, right? Listen, listen, listen. Listen to them talk. Let them be the first word to come out of their mouth. Let them have the last words to come out of their mouth. Don't let them, you know, don't don't jump into their conversations. You know, I was watching an interview today with Tom Hanks about the new Fred Rogers movie, and he was mentioning that, you know, Mr. Rogers just had that way of pausing, And letting the pause go as long as possible, even if it was awkward. Let the person you're talking to finish their thoughts. Don't try to finish the thoughts for them. Don't try to guess what they're going to say and then take them in a different direction. It's going to confuse them. Listen to what they're saying. Just like that, right? Always make sure that you have their ear. One of the things that we mentioned also last week is when you're having those meetings with your principals, write everything down. My advice, when you're having conversations, I'm saying conversations, not meetings, when you're having these experiences with your teachers, do not write everything down, right? You don't want to be seen as having business meetings with your teachers. When you get into the hallways, write it down, right? Hop into a a classroom, into a hallway, into a break room, whatever. Then you can write everything down and you can take notes on your on your conversations, but but try your best. Do not sit there and write down every single word um, that your teachers are saying. It's not, it's just not an, it's not an appropriate thing, right? Like I I would get nervous if another teacher or a tech coach sat down next to me and just started jotting down every single thing that I said. So try not to do that. And then lastly, and I promise you, this is the last thing, but absolutely the most important thing, think. Think before you respond, right? We already talked about having their teachers have that first word and the last word, but understand when it's time to lead the conversation, understand when it's time to react. You're going to know from experience, from working with these teachers, 
which teachers want you to feed them every little lesson and which teachers are just looking for you to pull the information out of them. And once you have those relationships, you are golden. You are good to go and you are ready to start a great school year. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have teachers that are going to come along with you. You're going to have those first followers that are going to be able to work with you and do whatever you want. And they're going to take those newsletters you write. And they're going to certainly go to town and have a great year. And you're going to have those teachers that every time you walk in their classrooms, they're going to say, nope, I'm good. I don't need you. Thanks. See you later. The whole idea here is to form those relationships that are going to be lasting throughout the school year and many years ahead, but also create those relationships where when you're not in the room, they are going to be talking about your you and your experiences and hopefully helping other teachers understand the value that you bring to them bring to them schools, and also into their classrooms. After all, if it wasn't for the relationships, we wouldn't have these positions. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the last two episodes here. We talked a lot about administrative relationships last week, and today we talked about teacher relationships. And you're probably asking, where can I go to find more information about this? And how can I get support with my own programs? And I want to remind you guys that we have our Tech Coach Mastermind. It is a six or 12 month program. We started our mastermind last week and we are still having registration open. You can really sign up on any point in time. Our next meeting is going to be happening in the middle of October. I am looking forward to it. Like I said, we got about 18 tech coaches coaches that are all signed up. And we even have a fantastic school district that signed up all of their tech coaches. So if you're a, a tech coach administrator, or if you're in a building that has multiple tech coaches, I would love to talk to you. And I would love to work with you. There's so many great things about joining the mastermind. You get opportunities to not only meet and interact with other tech coaches, we give you access to our free Facebook group. We give you two free online courses. We're helping you build your ed tech integration plan. We give you one-to-one -one coaching with me twice a month. There are so many different things and it's only 20 bucks a month. $120 for a six-month plan, $240 for a, for a full-year plan, and we have some great other options available. If you guys are looking to invest in something this year, please invest in yourself by going over to teachercast.net slash mastermind and joining us each and every month on the Tech Coach Mastermind. We hope to see you there. Again, teachercast.net slash mastermind. That's teachercast.net slash mastermind. Don't forget that all the links are going to be in our show notes. This is episode number 62. We also have a great link in there for our free ebook. We haven't talked about this in a while. 40 Chrome extensions that every tech coach should know. I hope you guys download that and check it out today. We also spent some time this last couple of days rearranging our email newsletter. So those are going to start popping out again. And of course, I hope that you guys are also subscribing to this and all of our shows over on teachercast.net forward slash subscribe. We want to hear from you guys. You can reach out on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach and let us know how you guys are doing. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and you can find everything over at www.askthetechcoach.com. And we hope to see you on next week's episode where we're going to be talking about relationships, not with administrators, not with teachers, but with our students. So on behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.